My name is Dr. Deborah Richardson. I am an assistant professor at the University of Texas Southwestern Medical Center in the Division of Gynecologic Oncology, Department of Obstetrics and Gynecology. I am a fellow of the American Congress of Obstetricians and Gynecologists and the American College of Surgeons. What is cervical cancer and what are the causes? Cervical cancer is the second most common cancer affecting women worldwide. However, it is less common in the United States thanks to effective screening programs. The American Cancer Society estimates about 12,000 women will be diagnosed with cervical cancer in the United States in 2013, and about 4,000 women will die of the disease. The average age at diagnosis is 48. The two main subtypes are squamous cell carcinoma and adenocarcinoma. Over 99% of cervical cancer is caused by persistent infection with high-risk human papillomavirus, or HPV. This virus is ubiquitous in the United States, and most sexually active women have been exposed to this virus. Other risk factors include cigarette smoking, early age at first intercourse, defined as less than age 21, multiple lifetime sexual partners, history of other sexually transmitted diseases, immunosuppression, and low socioeconomic status. Use of birth control pills also seems to slightly increase the risk. Women can reduce their risk of developing cervical cancer by getting pap smears as recommended by guidelines and not smoking. There are also two HPV vaccines which are FDA approved. Cervarix vaccinates against HPV 16 and 18, two high risk HPV subtypes that cause about 70% of all cervical cancer. Gardasil vaccinates against HPV 16 and 18, and also 6 and 11, which cause general warts. The vaccines are recommended to be given around age 11 or 12, though are approved between the ages of 9 and 26. Women who have been vaccinated against HPV still need to get pap smears. How is cervical cancer diagnosed? Cervical cancer is diagnosed by a pelvic exam and biopsy. Many women may be asymptomatic. These women are often first diagnosed by having an abnormal pap smear. If a pap smear is abnormal, a colposcopy will be done. This is when the provider applies acetic acid to the cervix and looks with a microscope. Abnormal areas will be biopsied. A scraping of the endocervical canal, which is the inside of the cervix that leads to the uterus, may also be done. If high-grade dysplasia, which are precancerous cells, are detected, a leaf or a cold knife comb will be performed. This may diagnose cervical cancer. Other women may have symptoms. What are the symptoms of cervical cancer? Symptoms include bleeding after intercourse or abnormal vaginal bleeding, bleeding that comes irregularly or is heavier than before. Other symptoms may include pelvic or back pain, leg pain, and changes in urinary habits. If a mass is seen during a pelvic exam, a biopsy will usually be done in the office. Some women will need to undergo an exam under anesthesia with a cystoscopy where a camera is placed into the bladder and a proctoscopy where a camera is placed into the rectum. Other tests that may be done include CT scans and PET scans. How is cervical cancer treated? Cervical cancer is clinically staged. Treatment depends on the stage. If a cervical cancer is very small, and a woman has not finished having children, she can be treated with a cold knife comb. If a cervical cancer is very small and a woman has completed childbearing, she will be treated with an extra fascial or a regular hysterectomy. If a woman has a stage one cancer and is not too large, she will typically have a radical hysterectomy, removing the uterus, cervix, upper vagina, and parametria, the tissue alongside the cervix. Lymph nodes will also be removed. This can be done open or through a minimally invasive technique, including laparoscopic or using the da Vinci robot. Some women will need to undergo treatment with chemoradiation after radical hysterectomy. If a woman has a stage 1B cervical cancer and wants more children, she may be a candidate for fertility sparing surgery. This is a radical trachelectomy. The cervix, upper vagina, and parametria will be removed and the uterus is preserved. Lymph nodes will also be removed. A cerclage is typically placed to help reduce the risk of miscarriage in the second trimester if pregnancy is achieved. If a woman has a large stage 1B cervical cancer or stage 2 through 4A, she will usually be treated with chemoradiation. The radiation is given five days a week for five to six weeks. 
internal radiation will also be given. The chemotherapy is typically cisplatin and will be given weekly with the radiation to make the radiation work better. If a woman has metastatic cervical cancer, she will usually be treated with chemotherapy, most commonly with cisplatin or carboplatin and paclitaxel, or on a clinical trial if available.